okay our today's topic is interpretation interpretation of financial statement Action of financial statement also we call it ratio analysis right now let a brief intro wherever we invest in any company we get quarterly half yearly or by, by law at least once in a year we receive the financial statement of that company the financial statement of that company is in a different language and a normal normal person can't understand that language so when we compute ratios different types of ratios we try to understand we try to understand that financial statement or after computing ratios that financial statement gives some meaningful message to us through which through which we can check the performance of that company we can check the trend of the that company that whether the company is going up or down and how's how's the performance of that company right okay so the name of this topic is interpretation of financial statement through this topic we interpret we try to understand we try to understand the meaning of that financial statement right now the first question is why ratios why not raw figures you know if you see the financial statement you can see you can also check the performance of company through sales figure or net profit figure or total assets figure or total liabilities figure these all are raw numbers these all are raw, raw numbers so a person can argue or a student can think sir why can't we why can't we check the performance of company through these raw numbers sales sales is a raw number net profit total assets total liabilities why why are you computing ratios ratios means comparing two numbers ratios means comparing two numbers so the simple answer is listen here for example i just told you that there is a company whose net profit is 1 million dollars 1 million dollars net profit is 1 million dollar so you will say 1 million dollar is a big number okay so 1 million dollar is a profit and profit is a raw figure you know what i say next i said that we earned this 1 million dollar after investing 100 million dollars that means we invested dollar 100 million and after investing 100 million dollar we just got 1 million dollar so now just like take out the percentage 1 divided by 100 into 100 this is only 1% so return return is only return is only 1% return is only 1% see if you if you if you were seeing just just a raw number that is 1 million dollar it was very good 1 million dollar alone is very good profit but when you compare it that you invested 100 million dollars and you just got 1 million dollar so this 1% is nothing let us say the interest rates are 8% interest rate bank is offering is 8% and this company is giving us only 1% so this is not a good investment so after comparing the two numbers we got the meaningful picture right okay now listen you might have heard one word which is called stakeholder 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 is basically a big umbrella it's a big basket the stakeholders are those people who who takes interest in the company or who or company's activities affect those people for example employees yes employees are stakeholders banks shareholders government government is also stakeholders your customers your supplier they all are stakeholders right so whenever financial statement is published and it's sent to different users different users or different stakeholders each and every stakeholder finds his own interest his own interest from the financial statement what does it mean just think there is a tv Uh, there is a tv there is a lounge and a purse and there is a remote right tv remote if an old man man comes and he sees the tv he will see news or something like that if if a young boy or girl come to in this room he will watch cartoon if a you know for if a 20 years old or 25 years old guy came he will what he will watch he will watch movies or something like that that means there is one tier television but different people are looking different things of their own interest right similarly when financial statement comes in the hand of different stakeholders 
each and every stakeholders try to find his own interest. For example, employees. Employees are always interested in the liquidity of the company. Why? Because employees get the salary in cash. If the employer does not have cash, how will he pay to the employee? So employees are always interested in liquidity. So employees will always look at the liquidity ratios of the company. Similarly, employees are always interested in profitability as well, because if the owner is not earning how, how he will give, how he'll give to the employees. So in times of losses, employees are fired. Similarly, shareholders, shareholders are also interested in liquidity because if shareholder wants cash dividend, so for cash dividend companies must have cash. Also shareholders are interested in profitability because profitability is linked to EPS and EPS is linked to share price. Okay. So different users are interested in different ratios, different heads. That's why that this whole topic ratio analysis is divided into different heads. Major heads are number one, profitability ratios. Number two, long-term solvency ratios. Number three, management efficiency ratios. Similarly, there are two more heads that is liquidity ratios and investment ratios, right? Okay, let's start with profitability ratios. Now, in the profitability ratios, the first head is return on capital employed. The profit in the profitability ratios, the first ratio is return on capital employed. Okay. In short, we call it Rose or Rocky. The formula for return on capital employed is PVIT divided by capital employed times 100. What is the formula of capital employed? Capital employed is shareholder equity plus non-current loans or non-current liabilities. And there is one more formula, which we call it total assets, total assets less current liabilities, right? Now wait, uh, I have just written two formulas for capital employed. Number one is shareholder equity plus non-current loans or long-term liabilities. And second is total assets, less current liabilities. Student asked the question, sir, these two formulas are same. Yes, they, these two are same, exactly same. So somebody may ask, sir, prove it. Let, let me prove it through, a, through SOFP. See, this is, your, this is SOFP. You remember in SOFP on the one side, we write assets. On the other side, we write equities and liabilities, okay? For example, now look at here. For example, you have non-current asset NCA of 200 and you have current assets of 300. So your total assets are 500, okay? Asset side, you, you have total assets of 500. In equities and liabilities, you have ordinary share capital 100. You have share premium. It's also part premium, share premium 50 and you have retained earning, you have retained earning of 200, let us say, or sorry, 100, right? Then this is the equity packet. Then you have non-current liability or non-current loans of 80. So this is 250 and 80 is I think 330. And then you have current liabilities of 170, right? Okay, so that's a balance SOFP. Now, what is capital employed? Look at me and listen very carefully. Capital employed means 
all long term sources of finance all long term sources of finance so what does it mean it means shareholder equity c this this is shareholder equity plus non current loans c c c this is this is this this is your capital this is your capital employed c this is equity and this is loans equity plus loan okay so 250 plus 80 It's three thirty. It's three thirty. Two fifty plus eighty is three thirty. Is your capital employed? Now you can you can compute you can compute this capital employed through a different formula. What is this? The first formula is shareholder equity plus non-current liabilities or non-current loans, and the second formula is total assets. See, this is total assets less current liability. Total assets less current liability. See, total asset is five hundred. Total asset is five hundred, and if you subtract one seventy from five hundred, you will get again. You get you will get again three thirty. So so you can use any formula, either the first formula, shareholder equity plus non current liabilities or non current loans, or the second formula is total assets less current liability. Both formulas are correct. Okay, look at it. now what is the formula the formula is of rocky return on capital employed is pbit divided by capital employed into 100 pbit is profit before interest and tax profit before interest and tax so this you can pick it up you can pick pbit from income statement you will get ready made pbit from the income statement you will put it here and in the denominator you will write capital employed and how to calculate capital employed i just told you right now my first question is what is the difference between return and profit what is the difference between return and profit a very basic thing return and profit return is always obtained from investment and profit is on sales don't forget i repeat return we always get on investment when we invest we get profit we we get return and the profit is computed on sales profit we get profit when we do sales right okay so these are the basic terminologies now what return on capital employed shows very important it shows the efficiency of management how efficient your management is in generating return in generating return in very simple words in very very simple words let us say this there is a company a company a invested 1 lakh company a invested 100000 total and he get 10000 profit times 100 so the return is 10% return is 10% that means by investing 100000 we are getting 10000 profit this is company a and in company b we invested 100000 and the profit before interest and tax is 30000 times 100 Thirty percent. Now you just you just take your decision. Your everything is in front of you. Which company is more efficient? Which management is more efficient? Which management is using assets more efficiently in generating profit? Obviously, company B, the second company, because the investment amount is same, but the return is different. Okay. So what Rocky what Rocky shows Rocky Rocky shows. the efficiency of management efficiency of management but this is the very basic thing it's not difficult at all now we compare we compare comparison of rocky number 1 now listen comparison of return on capital employed comparison of return on capital employed comparison of return on capital employed number 1 we compare return on capital employed with interest rate this is very important look at here let us say 
the return on capital employed of our company is 6%. My company's return on capital employed, my business return on capital employed is 6%. Whereas the interest rate in the uh, which bank is offering is 12%. So what should I do? I should simply close my business. Why? Because business means with risk investment. Business means with risk investment. In my business, I'm taking risk and I'm only getting 6%. So it's better I should invest my amount in fixed income, in fixed income bank giving 12% without risk and that is without risk. So the first rule, don't forget your ROAS, your return on capital employed or your Rocky must be greater, must be greater than the interest rate, must be greater than the interest rate. Your Rocky must be greater than interest rate. Don't forget. Okay. Otherwise the business is not, business is not performing good. Business is useless. Number two. We compare rows with past the same company. We compare rows with our uh, last year, last financial year or two years. So that, so we check the trend that what was the rows last year and this year. Okay. And the third thing is, third thing is look at me. Third thing is with competitors, same industry with competitors, same industry, right? Let us say we are talk about the car industry. So Toyota, if we, if we are investing in Toyota company, so we are, we'll compare it with BMW. We'll compare, com, compare it with Honda and other Ford and all other competitors, right? Okay. So this is very common. So these are the comparison of rows. Now, now I'm going to move towards the advanced area, the next level discussion of rows, which is technical discussion. Okay, <clears throat> I have written five points and I'm gonna explain you these five points and these all are our advanced commentary, right? Okay, so the first thing is, the first thing is, investment in new projects. Now hold, 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 hold. Let us say this is 2018. And this is 2019. Okay. Now, you know, many students, they write wrong commentaries in exams. And this thing is highlighted by examiner in the examiner re reports. So what I will do for this for point number one, for point number one, I'll first teach you a wrong commentary. Then I'll teach you what is, what is wrong in that commentary. And then I'll tell you the correct words. Be very active. Be very active. Listen, whenever there is a major change in rows, Rocky, 
always look at the carrying value of non current asset c n c a stands for non current asset n c a stands for non current assets right okay so your ros decrease from 20% to 15% and your non current asset increase from 2 million to 5 million so the now the student will ask sir when non current asset is increasing why ros is decreasing let me give you a one wrong answer one wrong answer and still people find it logical listen look at here uh when see your non current asset is increasing your non current asset is increasing that means when your non current asset is increasing your total assets also increasing when your non current assets increases your total assets also increases and look at here when your total assets increases your capital employed goes up and when your capital employed goes up capital employed is the part of denominator so your ros will go down i repeat i repeat look at me look at me see when your non current asset goes up so non current asset is the part of total assets so when non current asset goes up your total asset goes up and when your total asset goes up your capital employed goes up and when your capital employed goes up your return on capital employed goes down so it's very very logical students say sir see non current asset increasing so assets also increasing total assets also increasing and cap when total assets increasing capital employed increasing so automatically ros will go down makes sense but this is wrong commentary what is the right commentary and why this is wrong let me let me tell you you know non current asset is increasing that means that means we have opened more new shops we have opened more retail outlets we have in we may have invested in new factories we may have invested in new operations okay so when we open new retail outlets so i agree that all assets increases because we we have opened new outlets so our assets goes up and when your asset goes up your non current asset goes up your denominator goes up but you have also earned something from those assets you have you invested in new assets so th those those new assets will gonna earn you make you profit make you sales so your numerator also goes up so your numerator also goes up now you tell me both denominator and numerator because if you have invested in new non current assets you might have earned something from those new assets from those new shops from those new boutiques those new retail outlets you you must have earned something so now what's the correct answer sometimes what happens we we do look, look at here sometimes what happens we do investment in new projects new 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 projects new projects means no experience of that business in past or we have launched a new product or we have opened our shop in a new area where nobody knows us so that's the routine that's the routine sayings that when you start a new product when you start a new business so in the early days in the first year you don't make big profits you you go slowly and with respect to time you make goodwill and then you become a super hit, super hit guy it applies everywhere in teaching all professions all profession then when you start a new thing you you go slowly right so now we can say that it may be possible that company has invested in a new product so when company has invested look at me and listen very carefully when company has invested in a new product or a new area so your denominator goes up immediately your denominator goes up immediately for example your denominator goes up by 50% but that new product didn't get you good return in the first year because you are new so your numerator only goes up by 20% your numerator only goes up by 20% now think mathematically denominator is increases by 50% and numerator increases by just 20% so automatically your ros will go down automatically automatically your ros will go down this is the real commentary this is the real answer right okay so don't forget that invest ment in new projects may decrease your ros investment in new projects may decrease your ros okay look at i'm um, wait think over it think over it number 2 size of business distort comparison hold let me give you example uh let us say i have two students with me to the first student i gave him 1000 dollars and i tell him 
today to invest okay so he took one thousand dollars from me and after one year he gave me he returned me twelve hundred dollars today i gave him one thousand dollars and after one year he returned me twelve hundred dollars so two hundred dollars extra and two hundred dollars is twenty percent of one thousand i gave him one thousand in return he gave me total twelve hundred so the first guy gave me twenty percent return the first guy gave me twenty percent return look at me very carefully now what i did to the another guy i gave another guy 10 million dollars 10 million 10 million dollars okay next year that guy gave me 11 million dollars in return today i gave the second guy 10 million dollars and the next year he returned me 11 million so 1 million extra so 1 million divided by 10 million which i gave him times 100 the return is 10 percent so the first guy gave me 20% return and second guy gave me 10% return. The first guy gave me 20% return and the second guy gave me 10% return. So what I did, I started, I starting, started scolding second guy that what you did, you wasted my money. You just, you just brought 10% return. 10% is nothing. See the other guy, he brought 20% return. So the first, second guy told me, sir, what you are doing? How you can compare the $1,000 with $10 million? You just gave $1,000 to the other guy. So 200 is nothing. Just hear me. He may have added this 200 from his own pocket, but you gave me $10 million. It's very difficult to manage $10 million. It's not an easy job. So this comparison is not like with like, because the amount, because the size of investment is not same. So same is the case here. If you are comparing two businesses, if you are comparing two businesses and the size of the and size of the these two businesses are not same, so their roles may be different. Or giving you give you one more example. Let us say we have two, we have two businesses in two different cities. So maybe the income patterns, the per capita income, the lifestyle, the spending patterns of the two cities are different. So definitely. The returns, the returns of the two cities will also be different. You just think I have two branches of my institute, one in um, um, city X and the second in city Y. So there is a definitely a demand, demand difference between the two cities. Or you can just think I have one branch in London and the second branch in Scotland. So there is a big difference between the buying power of London people and Scotland, Scottish people, right? London in London, Everything is expensive, right? So the return may be different. Now, decision of buying asset or renting asset. Excellent point, excellent point. And a little bit technical. Let us say my return on capital employed is 20%. You know what is return is return on capital employed is basically average return on capital employed is basically average that means what do you mean by 20 percent return on capital employed that means on average if i invest in any part of my business i get 20 percent return my split units my factory my cars each and every asset gives me on average 20 percent return right and this ratio this rocky is same in last 20 or 30 years that means this is a consistent rows. This is not a one off rows. We are earning 20% since last 20 years for sure. Rose, right now today we, uh, I got, I was in my office and I got a call from my assistant that, sir, we need a new factory, sir. We our operations getting expanded. So we need a new factory. Okay. I said, okay, I, I will arrange. Don't worry. So I called a broker. And I asked him that we want a new factory in this, this, this area. What is the price of the factory if we buy? So the broker told me thousand, uh, one, one hundred thousand dollars. That means if I buy, if I buy a new factory, that factory will cost me hundred thousand US dollars. You know what I asked? What, what I asked the second question. My second question was that, sir, if I rent, if I take this, this factory on rent what is the rent what is the per year rent so he said the per year rent is eight thousand dollars eight thousand dollars the per year rent now hold what is the uh, what is the price of new factory it's hundred thousand dollars 
and what is the annual rent is eight thousand dollar let's calculate the percentage let's calculate the percentage so rent is eight percent of the market value rent is eight percent of the market value i simply i just rent is eight percent and what is your what is your rocky what is your rose your rose is 20 percent so i immediately ordered that broker to get that thing on rent why why wait 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 return on capital employee 20 percent means whatever asset comes with us whatever asset gets connected with me i earn 20 percent from that asset that's my rule that's my skill that's my name that whatever assets join hands with me or whatever assets comes under me i make 20 percent from that asset right so now just just imagine when I take this factory on rent, when I get this factory on rent, that factory will, will be part of my, my, my team. So I will earn 20% from that. I will earn 20% because my rose is 20%. I will earn 20% from that factory, but I just have to give how much? I just have to give how much rent? Only 8%. So that means 12% is, is my net profit. I will earn extra. Not, not getting. Just think whatever assets comes with me comes under my head joins hand with me i make 20 percent. i just earn 20 percent from that asset so i will earn 20 percent, and i just have to give eight percent rent so simply an additional 12 percent will go in my pocket extra so no need to buy why why investing it's better you take in take on rent and enjoy the extra 12 percent so the central idea of the story is that Sometimes return on capital employed is used when you are doing when you are taking decision of taking asset on rent or buying them. Taking asset or rent or buying them, return on capital employed is useful in that case as well. Okay, don't forget. Wait, 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 wait. Let let me give you thirty seconds. Read it. I just discussed three points till now. Now the fourth point is using cost model or revaluation model. You all students, you all know what is the difference between cost model and revaluation model. You all know this, no need to tell you this. Now, let us say this is company A and this is company B. Company A uses cost model Company B uses revaluation model. Okay. The return on capital employed of company A is 25%. Company B rose is just 15%. Okay. Now, let us say I'm the owner of company B and I, I have started criticizing my managers. I've started criticizing my managers that see your rose is only 15% and the competitor and the competitor is earning 25%. Then my manager, then my manager explained me one simple thing. He said, sir, that's not our, our issue. That's the issue of your accounting policy. Sir, we are using revaluation model. We are using revaluation model and in revaluation model, assets, properties, plant and equipment and assets are reported at market value. Now hold, let us say 10 years back, 10 years back, I bought a property for 1 million pounds. 10 year back, I bought a property for 1 million pounds and now the market value of that property is 5 million pounds. Repeat, 10 years back, I bought a property for 1 million pounds and now the market value of that property is 5 million pounds. Okay, so which if I'm using, if I'm using revaluation model, if I am using revaluation model, so obviously I'll report asset at $5 million. So the company, so the company, look at here, look at here, so the company, using revaluation model they will have higher value of assets they will have higher value of assets see so their assets will be higher their assets will be higher and when their assets will be higher their capital employed will be higher and when their capital employed will be higher their return on capital employed will be lower i repeat see the cost of my property is one million dollar 10 years back i bought it for one million dollar 
and today that property is value is five million dollar so if i'm using revaluation model revaluation model means using re reporting assets at market value and market value is higher so when i'm using when i use when i use revaluation model my the value of my assets will be higher and when the value of my assets will be higher my capital employed will also be higher so my rocky will be lower my rocky my return on capital employed will be lower okay so this is very common sense thing wait hold that if a company is using revaluation model instead of cost model look at me and think if a company is using revaluation model instead of cost model rose will be lower rose will will decline okay because of the higher values of assets and the last thing now and the last point of discussion is timings of investment timings of investment the last point to discuss is timings of investment now you just think that i'm the owner of a big brand like zara nax river island or any any brand any brand and i have to open two new boutiques this year i have to open two new retail outlets this year okay so now what i will do listen this is my accounting period 1st of january to 31st december okay now what this is my accounting period what i did i opened this new boutiques and new retail outlets in the month of november in the month of november so when i open new shops or new retail outlets in the month of november so by the end of the december these will be part of my assets obviously i opened the new boutiques the new retail outlets in the month of november so by the end of this these december uh, by the end of december the, these these all boutiques these new retail outlet outlets must be the part of my assets my assets base so just think my assets will increase see my assets will increase immediately and when my assets increase immediately because these 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 boutiques are parts of my earned assets so they have just increased my denominator but just do you think that these these boutiques will give me full year profit no i have opened i op i have opened the boutique in november so that means i just earned two months from those boutiques i just earned two months from those new retail outlets so when i have earned only two months from those retail outlets so that means only two months two months effect in the numerator in the numerator in the numerator the effect of these new boutiques is just for two months but in the denominator full effect is included so obviously the rows will go down not getting just think we have opened the boutiques in november so that means only two months two months these new boutiques give, uh, make me make me earn make give me return only two months so in the new return only two months profit is included but in the denominator complete 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 investment is included so definitely denominator is higher and the new rate is lower so obviously the rows will go down this this may be also the reason for decrease in rows sometime so we need to check carefully the timings of investment point let me give you 30 seconds let me give you 30 seconds look at here look at here and think look at here and think please now the second profitability ratio the second profitability ratio is the second profitability ratio is gp margin that is gross profit upon sales times 100 and there is one more margin which is called operating
now look at here look at here there is a very very famous word that is margin don't forget margin means profit as a percentage on sales margin means profit as a percentage on sales profit as a percentage on sales right so when when you when you talk about gp margin so what is gp margin gross profit as a percentage of sales when you talk about operating profit margin operating profit is basically pbit operating profit is operating profit upon sales into 100 and when you talk, talk about np margin net profit margin so the net np margin is np net profit upon sales into 100 so in simple terms this is very famous statement margin means profit as a percentage of sales margin means profit as a percentage of sales right so if you want gp margin that is gp upon sales into 100 if you want operating profit margin that is operating profit upon sales into 100 if you want np margin then np upon sales into 100 now what gp margin simple words what gp margin reflects let us say you have 20 percent gp margin your gp margin is 20 percent right so what does it say it means with every one dollar sales with every one dollar get sales you get 0.2 dollars gp or in simple words every hundred with every hundred dollar sales you get twenty dollars gross profit that means eighty dollars is your cost of sales eighty dollars is your cost of sales right okay so it reflects your profitability your cost your cost the higher the gp margin the lower your cost is right okay now one basic commentary let us say let us say your gp margin in 2018 was 15 percent it's now in 2019 it's 20 percent in 2018 your operating margin is 10 percent and in 2019 it is eight percent now what will you comment how will you comment on this this is this thing see your gp margin is going up and your operating profit margin is going down so what you will say that till the gross profit performance is excellent till the gross profit think about the income statement till the gross profit performance is excellent but after gross profit performance is not good so you know what is the difference between gross profit and operating profit are the operating expenses the operating expenses are increasing the operating expenses are increasing or we can say the operating expenses or operating cost are not in our control operating cost is not in our control operating cost is not in our control okay this is what we will see now let me tell you some factors very important factors factors affecting margin factors factors affecting margin number Errors in the errors in the valuation of stock. Now look at here. For example, you have a product and the selling price of your product is 10. The cost of the product is 5 cost per unit so your profit will be your gross profit will be five okay look at here selling price is 10 cost is five and profit is five okay so now what is the margin right now five is the profit 10 is the selling price five divided by 10 into 100 is 50 percent five divided by 10 into 100 is 50 percent five divided by 10 into 100 is 50 percent okay right now let us say as an as an owner i want more profit so uh, what I decided, I decided to increase the selling price. So I make the price 11. So I make the price 11. No change in cost. So the GP will be 6. 
Now again calculate the margin. 6 divided by 11. 6 divided by 11 into 100 makes 55% or something. So open your eyes and look at here. When your selling price increases, your GP margin, your margin goes up. And when prices goes down, margin goes down. Okay, number two, increase or decrease in cost of sales. Obviously, when the cost decreases, you earn more. And when cost increases, you earn less. So increase in cost de decreases your margin and decrease in cost increases your margin and vice versa. Number three, errors in the valuation of stock. Don't forget that if you do, if you do some errors in the valuation of stock, if you do some errors in the valuation of stock, so when your closing stock is not right, correct, you do mistake in calculating your closing stock. When your closing stock is not fine, definitely this error will be will go in cost of sales because we use closing stock in cost of sales. So that means your cost of sales is also not correct. And when your cost of sales is not correct, your GP is also affected. So the GP margin, right? So errors in the valuation of stock also affects your margin. Don't forget this. Look at here, just for 10 seconds, 10 seconds, please. Now, now the next, next profitability ratio is asset turnover. Next profitability ratio is sales divided by capital employed, okay? And now what is the, this ratio comes in times, times, not in percentage, but in times. Okay. What this ratio, ratio shows, it shows how well or how efficiently your assets are being used to generate sales how well or how efficiently your assets are being used to generate sales your assets are being used to generate sales your assets are being used to generate sales okay right now listen first example let us say I am the owner of a pizza shop. Okay. And now I want to start home delivering pizza. So I bought a new bike for $30,000, right? I bought a new bike, a new motorbike for $30,000. And because of this new 30,000 motorbike, I got success in delivering $1,50,000 pizza. My sales increased to additional sales became 150,000 because of this this investment so i delivered pizza worth of 150000 dollars so by doing this investment of 30000 by doing this investment of 30000 i made sales of 150000 so let's cancel it out uh, uh, you know the table of 3 it's 1 and this is 5 so the answer is 5 times what does it mean 5 times means five times means with every one dollar investment in non-current asset we are generating five dollar sales five times five times with every one dollar investment in non-current asset we are making five dollar of sales so our efficiency is five times our efficiency is five times okay so the greater look at me the greater this number the greater is our efficiency right okay so now student asks sometime sir by looking the formula, by looking at the formula of this, we can recall one more ratio, return Rocky. 
uh, there is a, there is some similarity there is some similarity in acid turnover and rocky yes and there is a relationship also which i'm going to tell you soon between rocky and acid turnover between rocky is return on capital employed and acid turnover just look at the formula of acid turnover and think about rocky look at the formula of acid turnover and think about rocky in the rocky the in in rocky formula numerator in numerator we write pbit and in asset turnover formula in numerator we write sales so now what's the major di difference asset turnover shows how well or how efficiently your assets assets are being used to generate sales your assets are being used to generate sales and what rocky says rocky says how well or how efficiently your assets are being used to generate profits your assets are being used to generate profits that's what rocky says okay now i have something very basic basic thing for you have you heard about law of demand in economics and that's very simple that whenever price goes down of any product so the quantity demanded of that product increases customers comes when you apply when you announce for a sale when you announce for a sale or discount when you give discount for any product normally you get your new customers so you will get you get more rush of customer right so now if i want if i want my assets to be used full day non stop and if i want lot of customers so i need to decrease the selling price so my dear don't forget whenever you decrease whenever you decrease your selling price the quantity demanded the rush of the customer comes to you and now your assets will be used more efficiently non stop your assets will be used to generate sales so by decreasing selling price you can increase your asset turnover look at the look at my words decrease in selling price may increase your asset turnover remaining discussion same as rose for your gap employee now let me tell you the relationship between rocky and asset turnover now look at here return on capital employed is basically a, the product of open your eyes asset turnover and operating margin return on capital employed is basically the product of asset turnover and operating margin now let's double click on these two formulas what is asset turnover what is asset turnover asset turnover is basically sales divided by capital employed yes and what is the formula so of operating mar profit margin operating profit margin is pbit divided by sales times 100 okay you remember the two formula i just write the their formulas their respective formulas now do you know the cancellation let's cancel it this this sales in numerator and this sales in denominator so this sales and this sales will be cancelled this sales and this sales will be cancelled so what will be left so your thing which will be left is pbit upon capital employed 
times 100. Okay, right? So you just learned, you just learned a new formula, new relationship, return on capital employed, return on capital employed is the product return on capital employed is the product of asset turnover and operating margin return on capital employed is the product of asset turnover and operating profit margin right okay now hold in all books all famous books of ratio analysis one commentary is written in with this with this topic have you ever heard about the word trade off there is a trade off between an operating margin trade off means if you if you want one thing you will have to lose other thing if you want one thing you will have to lose give and take it's like give and take now let me explain you let us say we just studied we recently before 10 to 12 minutes we studied margin you know margin is dependent on selling price please look at me and be very active margin is dependent on selling price for example for example the selling price of my product was 10 and the cost was 5 so automatically the profit is also 5 look at me right now what is the margin 5 divided by 10 5 divided by 10 right now my margin is 50 percent right now my margin is 50 percent but let us say i'm a greedy person I'm a greedy, greedy, greedy owner, greedy businessman. So I want more profits and more margins. So to get this objective, I increase the selling price to, to, to fulfill, to fulfill this objective. I increase the selling price from 10 to 11, no change in cost. So my profit goes up. Now, what is my new margin? Six upon 11 into hundred is 55%. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, by increasing selling price, I achieve one target. I achieve one target. My margin goes up. My margin goes up. My I, my margin increases. But you know, but you know, according to law of demand, according to law of demand, you remember when we increase the selling price, when we increase the selling price, the quantity demanded goes down. Customers run away. And when the quantity demanded goes down, so now our assets will not be used more efficiently for generating sales so our asset turnover goes down so this is what we call what we call the trade off if you want to increase your operating margins if you want to increase your operating margins by increasing your selling price you will have to decrease your asset turnover so there is a there is a give and take there is a give and take and obviously vice versa Look at here, look at here. Okay, so don't forget there is a trade off between asset turnover and operating margin. There is a trade off between asset turnover and operating margins. Now the last profitability ratio is last profitability ratio is return on equity. Very famous R O E return on equity R O E. The formula is profit after tax divide by share holder 
equity times 100 okay profit after tax profit after tax divided by shareholder equity times 100 profit after tax divided by shareholder equity times 100 right now wait you have heard about this profit pbit let me give you some basics pbit this pbit does not belong to ordinary shareholders completely because we have to pay interest we have to deduct interest so now let's deduct less interest expense from this this is pbt less now this pbt also does not belong to ordinary shareholders completely because there is one thing government we have to pay tax to government tax department is there now we'll deduct tax expense so this is the final profit or we call this profit after tax we also call this pats profits attributable to ordinary shareholders profits attributable to ordinary shareholders so now in the numerator in the numerator we'll write this profit which is totally belongs to ordinary shareholders and in the denominator we'll write shareholder equity in the denominator we'll write shareholder equity shareholder equity means pure funds of shareholders shareholders investment so now whatever is coming is return on equity return on equity now let's hold what is rocky what is the difference between rocky and roe there's a big difference don't forget this is rocky return on and this is roe this is roe and that is roce return on capital employed in the denominator of return on capital employed look at me and think in the denominator of return on capital employed return on capital employed both long-term sources of finance exist we report both long-term that is loan plus equity that is loan plus equity both but in the denominator of roe pure pure equity that is the shareholder funds comes okay so this ratio reflects this ratio reflects proper 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 ordinary shareholders performance this ratio reflects proper ordinary shareholder funds performance okay so now just think who will be using this ratio think over it the, your answer should be ordinary shareholders. Ordinary shareholders are also called equity owners. So they, they will always be interested in the performance of their equity. That how much equity is generating, how, how what is the return? What is the return on that of on that equity investment, right? So let me write this ratio is used this ratio is used by ordinary shareholders before investment okay right this ratio also used by parent company before buying okay dear this ratio also used by parent company before buying any before buying any 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 subsidiary you you all have studied consolidation in consolidation when parent company buys subsidiary company when parent company buys running business or subsidiary company parent company buys it through ordinary shares parent company sometimes buys 100 percent ordinary shares or sometimes by 80 or 90 percent ordinary shares so in short parent company is buying equity equity or subsidiary company so parent company is definitely interested in in this ratio roe right that what is the return because parent company is investor and subsidiary company means investee so parent company normally looks at this ratio okay don't forget let me tell you some technical and interesting commentary regarding this in the real life business you will see this 
for example this is the capital structure of a business look at here this is the complete capital structure of the business and this is the equity investment that means the equity owners only invested this much amount and the whole remaining amount is loan loan finance or debt finance right for example just just for example the total the total worth of the company is 10 million dollars the total assets worth 10 million dollars and out of 10 million dollars the owners invested only 2 million the remaining 8 million dollars are financed by loan finance okay so now just look at me the, these owners are very very active people these owners these owners are very sharp people what they are doing they are running look at me they are running the whole show using debt finance they are running the whole show using debt finance and they are not giving the profit share to the debt finance people to the debt holders they are just giving fixed interest rate they are just giving fixed interest rate to the debt holders and after after giving that fixed interest after giving that fixed interest to that debt holders remaining all all big profits will be enjoyed by this this much people uh, with this much little equity you will enjoy this much profit so obviously your roe will go up not getting not getting see the whole show almost the whole show is running on debt finance on other people money and you are just paying fixed interest not the profit share you are not giving profit share to the debt finance holders you are just giving them fixed interest and after deducting that fixed interest the big profits are enjoyed by few few small equity investors so the equity will be low there will be the equity will be too low and the pat will be high so roe will also be higher roe will also be higher but yes my dear take my words this is the risky business this is the risky business because loan finance means fixed cost loan finance means big you have to pay fixed interest and i think you might have heard this statement that fixed cost increases the risk of owner fixed cost increases the risk of owner okay so this is the practical application don't forget let me give you one practical example related to this this is very practical example and i also gave you this example before as well where, where with the return on capital employed using rent example for example my return on capital employed is 20 percent students don't forget that return on capital employed is average return on capital employed is average what we are getting from all the assets so that means our all assets are giving us 20 percent return our split units our factories our cars our furnitures each and every asset is giving us 20 percent on average okay and now i was in my office i just got a call from a bank manager and he offered me 10 million dollars loan i said how much interest rate will you charge he said we'll charge six percent interest from you he said we'll charge six percent interest from you I opened my laptop and I checked my rows. So the rows is 20%. And the bank manager is giving me $10 million with only 6% interest rate. What should I do? Accept or reject? Accept or reject? Accept. Why? Now I'll take $10 million loan and I'll invest, I'll invest that $10 million in my business. I will invest that $10 million in my business. And I will earn 20%. I will earn 20%, I'll earn 20% from that $10 million and in return, I just have to give how much to bank? 6%. So the remaining 20% top is my, is my profit, is my enjoyment, not getting. I will earn 20% from that, from those firms and I just have to give 6%. So I'll enjoy the remaining 40% ride, 14, remaining 14% is my enjoyment. So sometimes taking loan is good, but yes, don't forget, loan is a fixed cost and fixed cost you have to pay even if you are earning or not just like in the example you can take is covid in covid everything is halt so 
you are not making any money but yes you have to pay your interest so th- such businesses such businesses debt finance business are riskier in terms of covid and such pandemics so that's the end of our first head that is profitability ratio let's let's move to long term solvency ratios now listen long the next head now we have changed the head next head is long term solvency ratios what does this define long term solvency ratios tells us the long term risk long term risk that how much company will exist how much time can company exist in long term what are the risk profile of that company okay so the first ratio is gearing the first ratio is gearing i have written two formulas in front of you let me explain you in very basic and very simple terms what is gearing let us say i am starting a new business so i i brought 100 dollars from my home that is my equity okay i am the owner and i brought 100 dollars from my home and 50 dollar i have taken loan 50 dollar i have taken loan that now so my total total finance total finance with the business is 150 and now what gearing says gearing says that what is the proportion of debt finance to the total finance that means in the numerator you will write loan finance and that means loan and in the denominator you will write the you will write the complete circuit that is loan plus equity so 150 times 100 this is 33.3% okay so your so your gearing is 33.3% in short what is gearing loan finance divided by the total finance loan finance in the numerator divided by total total finance into 100 so this is gearing now what do you think is it good higher gearing is better or lower 
higher gearing better is or lower gearing is better higher gearing means that company has taken too much loans company has taken too much loans so it, is this good to take too much loan no high loan means high loan means high fixed cost of interest giving you two reasons why loans are bad if company has taken a lot of loans that means higher loans means higher interest and interest is a fixed cost and fixed cost increase the risk of owner whether you are earning or not you have to pay fixed cost fixed cost is not an activity related cost fixed cost is not an activity related cost fixed cost is not an activity related cost my dear so this is not good for any business and number two number two the second reason why the loan loans are bad when you take loan you have you commit a repayment date you commit to repay the loan on a particular date and if you don't pay the loan on time if you don't pay the loan on time that means you will this this is going to be a default and the bank will going to file a case against you and your business will wind up so these are the two risk number one is interest and number two the repayment tension the repayment tension it's a very big tension and lot of time examiner has given this in different qualification like icw acc everywhere that repayment date is near and you have you don't have cash to repay so how will you repay just think okay so now let's come to the formulas so in simple terms lower gearing is better lower gearing means low financial risk higher gearing means high financial risk okay now what is the formula of gearing i just told you it's non current loans in the numerator divided by non current loans plus shareholder equity okay loans divided by loans plus equity loans divided by loans plus equity into 100 there is one more formula which is used commonly and that is debt equity ratio debt to equity ratio and what is the formula in the numerator we'll write non current loans in the new denominator we only write the shareholder equity times 100 okay now student will ask one question sir as these two formulas are different so definitely the answer will also come different so which formula which uh, should we use shall we use in the exams if examiner is silent not saying anything so use the first formula if examiner is silent so you better use the first formula but if examiner has written the formula in the exam then use that formula which is guided by the examiner okay normally in the advanced level qualification examiner normally writes the formula for ratio so you don't need to worry about it okay now next question next question is it is this is good that we are decreasing our gearing right higher gearing is not better lower gearing is better so i am going to tell you some techniques how to reduce how to decrease how to reduce gearing how to decrease or how to reduce gearing now i i'm going to explain you through mathematical process you must know the maths this is the gearing formula look at here this is the gearing formula okay this is the gearing formula non current loans divided by shareholder equity into 100 non current loans divided by shareholder equity into 100 right so how can how can we decrease how can we decrease gearing by decreasing numerator and increasing denominator if you want to decrease this gearing you need to decrease numerator or you need to increase denominator okay now let's now the first point is by repaying loan simple if you repay loan so there will be less loan so the numerator will go down and the numerator will go down then gearing will also go down so by repaying loan you can reduce your gearing the first technique the second technique by issuing ordinary shares for cash you issue new shares and you might have heard the double entry when you issue new shares you have make the entry debit bank you make the entry debit bank credit share capital and credit share premium you debit bank you credit share capital you credit share premium so automatically by issuing new shares you inject equity finance in the company so your equity so your equity your shareholder equity goes up and when your shareholder equity goes up your gearing or debt equity ratio goes down so these are the two points now the third point is by upward revaluation of non current assets by upward revaluation of non current asset if you remember let us say i bought a piece of land and i am using revaluation model so when i'll revalue the land i'll make the entry c land debit let us say 
and revaluation reserve revaluation reserve or revaluation surplus or oci you can write any name land debit or revaluation reserve or revaluation reserve credit land debit or revaluation reserve credit okay so when you credit revaluation reserve when you do upward revaluation you credit revaluation reserve credit revaluation reserve means your equity is increasing because revaluation reserve is part of shareholder equity revaluation reserve is part of shareholder equity so when your revaluation reserve goes up your shareholder equity also goes up and when your shareholder equity goes up your gearing goes down so this is also one of the technique of reducing gearing and the last point is by not paying ordinary dividends by not paying ordinary dividends this is very interesting now look at first let me go forward and then i'll take reverse gear i'll apply reverse gear look at me you know when when whenever any company pays ordinary dividend ordinary dividend is paid through from retained earning don't forget ordinary dividend is distributed is paid from retained earning so when we pay when we distribute dividend we make this entry retained earning debit and cash or bank credit we pay we pay cash so what is the entry what is the entry double entry for ordinary dividends retained earning debit and cash credit that means we are distributing our retained earning we are distributing our equity so when you pay dividends look at here when you pay dividends you paid from retained earning so your retained earning cuts down your retain your retained earning goes down and when your retained earning goes down look at here when your retained earning goes down your shareholder equity also goes down and when your shareholder equity goes down your gearing goes up i repeat when you distribute dividends you distribute it from retained earning so that means your retained earning goes down and when your retained earning goes down your shareholder equity goes down and when your shareholder equity goes down your gearing goes up so simple 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 relationship by distributing dividends your gearing will go up by distributing dividends your gearing will go up so let's do the reverse let's cancel your decision by not paying dividends if you don't pay the dividends so you don't need to decrease you don't need to see this you don't need to decrease this shareholder equity so your gearing won't increase that means that means automatically you can protect your gearing you can protect your gearing by not paying ordinary dividends think over it you know for some companies it is good to increase gearing because gearing high gearing means high loans and loan means debt and debt and don't forget debt is a cheap source of finance debt is a cheap source of finance so sometimes you become rich through these loan things you become rich through loans i gave you example this 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 see 20% and 6% that 
our return on capital employed is 20% and the market interest rate is 6%. So by taking more loans, we enjoy more profits. We can make more profits from others' money. We can make more profit from others' money. Just think like this. Gearing means you are using others, others' money and you are enjoying others' money. So it is good. It is good to increase gearing when you have consistent income. That means you are sure about your income. Your income is not a one-off or seasonal income. You have a perfect income. So it's then it's good to enjoy loan finance. And number two, with goods asset for security. Simple as that. When you go to the bank or any financial institution for asking loan, they ask guarantee. So if you have good proper assets for security or for charges, char you might have studied this word charges in your law paper. Right, fixed charge or floating charge that if you have proper assets to give to the bank for security, then you can easily enjoy the loan. Okay, so this is the other side of this ratio. Now our next ratio and the last ratio of today's class and the last ratio of this head as well long term is the interest cover. The formula of interest cover is PBIT. My dear, look at here. The formula of interest cover is PBIT divided by PBIT divided by interest expense and the answer comes in times. What interest cover shows? It shows the interest paying ability of, a com of your company how easily you can pay off your interest, right? Interest paying ability of a company. Now, let me give you a very basic example. You will understand. I'm presenting two companies in front of you. The first company has PBIT of $10 or 10 million. And this company is paying $8 interest out of this 10 and only $2 PBT is left, right? And the second company has 10, $10 million or $10 PBIT. And this company is giving $2 interest and $8 is the PBT. $8 is the PBT, profit before tax, okay? Right, $8 is the PBT, profit before tax, profit before tax, okay? Now, you tell me, as a bank manager, which company you will go give loan to? Both are your clients. Both are asking loan from you, and you are the bank manager which company will you entertain obviously this the second one is better the second one is better why let me give you a basic logic listen in the real life look at the first company in the real life you know the profits are volatile profit keeps changes so right now the profit is 10 from this 10 dollar we can pay 8 dollars yes but what if what if this $10 becomes $6 next year? What if because of market fluctuation, this $10 becomes six year, $6 next year? So we this, this guy won't be able to pay the interest. This guy, the first guy won't be able to pay the interest. So this is risky. But now look at the second case. 
look at the second case if for the second company this pbit becomes six dollar next year this pbit becomes six dollar next year still this company can easily pay the interest still this company can easily pay the interest so this company is better this is safe there is a big cushion this one is better okay now let's compute let's talk in terms of interest cover okay what is the formula of interest cover my dear look at here the formula of interest cover in numerator is pbit look at here in the numerator this is pbit divided by interest expense so let's go to the first company pbit is 10 dollars pbit is 10 interest is 8 so, so pbit is 10 divided by 8 answer is 1.25 times 10 divided by 8 answer is 1.25 times and the second company let's come to the second company 10 is pbit and 2 is the interest so 10 upon 2 the answer is 5 times now what is the interpretation the first company has only ability to pay 1.25 times interest the first company has only ability to pay 1.25 times interest of current current interest but the second company is that much powerful that the second company can pay five times of such interest multiple of five see two multiplied by five is ten that, that means the second company has the ability to pay five times interest so the second company is better and in short higher interest cover is better higher interest cover is better okay so whenever you are a bank manager and you are giving a loan to somebody so it's better you give to that client which has higher interest cover okay so for interest cover higher is better interest cover is higher is better let me write Now let me write one statement, the last statement. Interdependence between ratios. Interdependence between ratios. Maybe the spelling is wrong. <laughs> Interdependence between ratios. there is an let me write there is an inverse relationship between gearing and interest cover now now hold 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 you know what is what do you mean by interdependence between ratios it means sometimes when one ratio goes up the other ratio goes down there is an inverse relationship and yes there is an inverse relationship between gearing and interest cover let me prove you let me prove you see gearing means if a company is taking more loans just think if a company is taking more loans so that means their loans their numerator will go up their loans will go up so their numerator will go up and gearing will go up so when just think when a company will take more loans so that company will be called highly geared company highly geared their gearing will go up and when gearing goes up what happens look at here with high loans with high loans if your loans are high your interest expense will also be higher when your loans are higher your interest expense will also be higher so when your interest expense is higher, your denominator of interest cover will be larger, will be higher. So your interest cover will go down. Your interest cover will go down. You're not getting. Let me explain you last time. When you take more loans, let us say you are taking more loans. So when you take more loans, your gearing will go up, obviously, highly geared. You, you will become highly geared. 
when you take more loans your numerator of the loans of the gearing will go up so automatically your gearing will go up right and now because of taking more loans your interest expense will also go up your interest expense your interest expense your finance cost will also go up and when your finance cost goes up see the formula your denominator your denominator of interest cover goes up and your interest cover goes down so we can conclude we can conclude there there is an inverse inverse relationship between there is an inverse relationship between gearing and interest cover okay right so let's end the lecture i hope you like it take care enjoy bye bye